recorded by Miss S. E. Waldo, a disciple. Tuesday, 30th July 1895 Christs and Buddha are simply occasion upon which to objectify our own inner powers. We really answer our own prayers. It is blasphemy to think that if Jesus had never been born, humanity would not have been saved. It is horrible to forget thus the divinity in human nature, a divinity that must come out. Never forget the glory of human nature. We are the greatest God that ever was or ever will be. Christs and Buddha are but waves on the boundless ocean which I am. Bow down to nothing but your own higher self. Until you know that you are that very God of Gods, there will never be any freedom for you. All our past actions are really good because they lead us to what we ultimately become. Of whom to beg? I am the real existence and all else is a dream save as it is I. I am the whole ocean, do not call the little wave you have made I, know it for nothing but a wave. Satyakama, lover of truth, heard the inner voice telling him, you are the infinite, the universal is in you. Control yourself and listen to the voice of your true self. The great prophets who do the fighting have to be less perfect than those who live silent lives of holiness, thinking great thoughts and so helping the world. These men, passing out one after another, produce as final outcome the man of power who preaches. Knowledge exists, man only discovers it. The Vedas are the eternal knowledge through which God created the world. They talk high philosophy, the highest, and make this tremendous claim. Tell the truth boldly, whether it hurts or not. Never pander to weakness. If truth is too much for intelligent people and sweeps them away, let them go, the sooner the better. Childish ideas are for babies and savages, and these are not all in the nursery and the forests, some of them have fallen into the pulpits. It is bad to stay in the church after you are grown up spiritually. Come out and die in the open air of freedom. All progression is in the relative world. The human form is the highest and man the greatest being, because here and now we can get rid of the relative world entirely, can actually attain freedom. And this is the goal. Not only we can, but some have reached perfection, so no matter what finer bodies come, they could only be on the relative plane and could do no more than we. For to attain freedom is all that can be done. The angels never do wicked deeds, so they never get punished and never get saved. Blows are what awaken us and help to break the dream. They show us the insufficiency of this world and make us long to escape, to have freedom. A thing dimly perceived we call by one name, the same thing when fully perceived we call by another. The higher the moral nature, the higher the perception and the stronger the will. Tuesday afternoon. The reason of the harmony between thought and matter is that they are two sides of one thing, call it X, which divides itself into the internal and the external. The English word paradise comes from the Sanskrit paradesha, which was taken over into the Persian language and means literally the land beyond or the other world. The old Aryans always believed in a soul, never that man was the body. Their heavens and hells were all temporary, because no effect can outlast its cause and no cause is eternal, therefore all effects must come to an end. The whole of the Vedanta philosophy is in this story, two birds of golden plumage sat on the same tree. The one above, serene, majestic, immersed in his own glory, the one below restless and eating the fruits of the tree, now sweet, now bitter. Once he ate an exceptionally bitter fruit, then he paused and looked up at the majestic bird above, but he soon forgot about the other bird and went on eating the fruits of the tree as before. Again he ate a bitter fruit, and this time he hopped up a few boughs nearer to the bird at the top. 
This happened many times until, at last the lower bird came to the place of the upper bird and lost himself. He found all at once that there had never been two birds, but that he was all the time that upper bird, serene, majestic, and immersed in his own glory.